World maps in video games suck. This is my first episode. I just wanted to, you know, get straight to it. Do you remember when you were a kid and you'd play a game like Super Mario Brothers or Sonic the Hedgehog or something? You'd play through a level, have a whole lot of fun playing it, and then it would go on to the next one. This was a really great system, because if you actually enjoyed the game, you got to, you know, play more of it. And there was no interstitial bullshit getting in between you and the game. Then Super Mario Bros. 3 happened. And it kind of changed things. Right from the beginning of Super Mario Bros. 3, it pushed you right into a world map. Now at its core, the world map was nothing more than a glorified level select system. And that's okay. What Super Mario Bros. 3 did right is that it had the world map actually affect the game. Let's say you come to a fork in the road where one level is way too hard for you, but the other level not so much. You can skip that level altogether and progress through the game. Or, if there was a level that was too hard for you, and there was no other way to go around it, you could use an item you've got from the Mushroom House to make the level easier. They also added plenty of hidden areas and special secrets. The world map also offered a reprieve from the immediate challenge of the game. You weren't in an arcade anymore, so the pressure to rush through it was minimized. It allowed you to savor the game, and not just beat it. All the things I listed are examples of what a good world map does. It's aesthetically pleasing, and it offers benefits to the game itself. So why do all the modern ones suck? I'm looking at you, Super Mario 3D World. Like I just said, a good world map in a video game offers at least one of the benefits I've already outlined. A world map system like in Super Mario 3D World offers none of them. It's a checklist. Think about what you have to go through to play another level. After you beat a level, your characters jump out, it counts up all the green stars you've collected, you watch that little yellow brick road thing make a little diorama thing pop up, then it saves the data. Then it lets you know it saved the data. Then you finally get control back, and you can go get some coin you don't need and jump into the next level. You see when it's listed out like that? Sounds a bit tedious, doesn't it? Looking more into the game as a whole, the unnecessary addition of a world map only supplements the more tedious elements of the game. Each level has three or more green stars to collect, adding up to a total of 380 stars. It also includes stamps you can collect, but the reward for the stamps is tied to the Wii U's social network Miiverse, whereas the green stars give you, well, nothing really. Although you do need them to advance further in the game, locking off castle levels until you collect a certain amount. Come to think of it, it's a mechanic that feels remarkably similar to another game that everybody seemed to hate, where it locks you out of levels by having you collect random trinkets. And we all know how much that would suck, right? I mean, right? I mean, come on, am I right? <laughs> okay. The bonuses the world map can offer you don't reward you anymore either. All the little bonuses you get in the world map just give you lives or warp you ahead, which honestly is a reward I never understood myself. Is the bonus that you get to play less of the game? Now this isn't a full critique on Super Mario 3D World. I've got more I could say about it, but let's stay on track. The world map in this game is busy work. It's a checklist. That's all it is. So how can you fix it? Well, much like every Mario game, a Sonic game has an answer to its problems. This is the only time I'll be smug, I swear. Look at a game like Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Now, when Super Mario World 1 and 2 came out, it had a saving system, which was great, but it also had a world map. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 didn't, but it added two really cool features, story sequences and a unique save system. Now, like I said, save systems were being used in platforming games already. They'd been around since the NES days, and at this point, it was a necessity in the RPG genre, where you were on long, ongoing adventures and needed a way to save your progress. But platformers? Platformers are different. With a platforming game, you're expected to sit down and play for as long as you can until you either beat it, lose, or just plain give up. So, the novelty of having a save system in a platforming game was great. You could save your progress and go play any level you wanted. With a game like Super Mario World, the world map continued to offer that visual aid of progression, and with the benefit of a save system, you wouldn't have to start all over when you're done. Coming back to Sonic the Hedgehog 3, without its world map, it offered something... different, and in my opinion, better. As you play through the game, it saves your progress, naturally. So when you leave the game and come back to it later, you can pick up from where you left off. Or, you can pick any of the previous levels you've already beaten. Now this feature goes hand in hand with the story sequence feature I previously mentioned. After you beat a boss in Act 2, something happens that connects the previous zone to the next one. In the older games, it would tally your score like any other level, fade to black, and you'd end up in some new zone. By adding that smallest bit of continuity, it made you feel like you were progressing through a world, not just a series of levels, all without booting you to a world map to pick the next level. That is streamlining brilliance. It didn't have a world map because it didn't need one. 
and you're not missing out on that feeling of progression that a world map offered because you're feeling it as you play through the actual levels, which still offered plenty of secrets, bonus games, power-ups, and everything a world map could offer. By getting all of that stuff out of the way in the beginning, it allows for a naturally flowing game experience that all games in this genre should offer. Now how can you take a system like this and apply it to a new game like Super Mario 3D World? Well, it all comes back to that level of continuity. Hell, looking back, the first Super Mario Bros. game had it. The pipe leading to World 1-2 was behind the castle in World 1-1. The save game system can help in that too. 3D World has a lot of mechanics that make you want to go back and play levels, like the green stars and finding the stamps. If you had that checklist offered as soon as you picked your level from the save menu, it's as simple as that. You see, platforming games are all about running, jumping, and this active expression as you play through and explore a new and interesting world. A game that only reminds you how tedious it can feel at some times isn't a good game. And don't think of this as some kind of weird fanboy skewing either. Sega and Sonic have done this too. Look at the world map in Sonic Colors. It's terrible. It offers no benefits whatsoever, except maybe giving you access to the special stages, which really is just the multiplayer mode. So why not just have that as an option in the beginning? Okay, allow me to rephrase that. No exceptions. It just plain sucks. So that's all I got. World maps suck these days. The artist has spoken. Hey there. If you're hearing this right now, you made it through the debut episode of my new series. Allow me to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, let me know with a like and hit that subscribe button. I'm a new hand at this, so if you have any tips to help improve the show, or just want to say great job, feel free to leave a comment. You can also find me on Tumblr and Twitter. A link to both will be in the description below. Last but not least, you can find more content of mine at The Artist and the Economist, a blog and podcast I share with my brother, where we talk and write about, well, anything, really. So thanks again, and I hope to see you back for the next episode. See you then!